god. Oh god! I've never seen a video of this before. This would totally be the part where your nana would lean over and put her hand over your eyes. <laughs> Hello, I'm Dr. Ann Jones, the ABC Science Nature Nerd, and today we are going to be cracking open the bedroom door to peek inside and see what animals get up to after dark. From brutal displays of dominance to grand and sometimes gross romantic gestures, we have scoured the internet to look for the five most interesting mating rituals that the animal kingdom has to offer. <laughs> Hello, this is Dr. Ann Jones here from the future. Just to give you a warning, we're about to get sex rated. All right, play the clip. <laughs> We tend to think of giraffes as gentle and docile. But is there anything about their behaviours that might change that? What about their sexual behaviours? Are they as unique as the giraffes themselves? Ooh, we've got giraffe wee. Okay, oh, the face. Oh, he's done the face. I love the face. What you're seeing before you is a giraffe love story in real time. Because one way to ask a girl out on a date when you're a giraffe is by putting your nostrils into her wee. What you want to do is have a bit of a taste, have a bit of a smell. And he has this Fleming response where his lip curls up and he sort of like looks like he's frozen in ecstasy for a moment. And what it actually is, is a, an anatomical response, drawing all of the odors right back up into the nose, into the nasal passages, so he can sense whether the female is in yeastress and ready to mate. Oh! <laughs> and that's what happens when a female isn't ready to be mounted. He'll follow her around for like hours sometimes just consistently trying to give her messages that he wants to make by tapping her back legs with his front legs and he'll even sit his head on her rump and around her rear end. It's like the giraffe equivalent of Tinder, she swiped left. If there's one thing that you want your early love endeavours to not be, it's filmed. <laughs> so yeah, this poor guy, I mean, he had a go, didn't he? Yeah, it's a bit rough laughing at him. She says, laughing at him. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. I mean, it looks like they're having a fight with pool noodles, right? But it's way more violent than that. They can actually use those ossicones, those sort of horny parts on the top of them, as weapons to harm each other. So these two males are having a bit of a neck sword fight because there's probably a female nearby. And when it comes to mating, there can only be one man who reigns supreme at one moment, and that's what they're fighting for. Only one of them gets the girl. They sort of act more like chains than swords because they're bendy and it's got a whip sort of reaction to it. Yeah, I mean, that just hurt my neck just doing that and I don't even have a giraffe neck. Oh, oh. Oh, she's saying hello. God, look how much bigger he is. So a male giraffe is significantly bigger than a female. He can be 1.5 times her entire weight. So when they actually mount, it's actually a pretty short act. In fact, even with all the preamble, it comes up and it builds to a sexual act of a matter of seconds. I mean, he's vigorously trying to mount her so vigorously that he's disturbed the picker bird that's sitting on his head while he's trying to have sex. Nature's weird. <laughs> oh, he's got really bad aim. <laughs> I suppose he can't see what he's doing. That was closer. So she looks like she's into it. She's not running away. She's sort of presenting. She's moving her tail aside a little bit. 
And he's into it because he's got a massive erection. And uh, that's a love story right there. That is scary. Why 2,000 kilograms of animal just coming at you? I think it's because of the scale of him that he looks as if he's running in slow motion but he's not, he's running quite quickly. And in fact, they can run up to 60 kilometers an hour, which is really very fast. So this giraffe doesn't look like he's very happy. One of the likely explanations is that there is a female around that he doesn't want anyone else near. She's almost ready to mate and he's gonna guard her. Giraffes really are incredible creatures. It's like a kid drew them. I don't know how they actually exist. And they are incredibly docile in most circumstances. But when it comes to sexy times, and also when they've got children around, they can really mean business. Spiders are exceptional predators. If you're an insect and you come across a spider, you're a goner. Right? Could it be that when it comes to mating, spiders are just as dangerous to each other as they are to their prey? Tarantulas. Look at how beautiful and hairy they are. Oh my god. What? Oh gosh. Oh gosh, yeah, that is the end. He died doing what he loved. Spider sex involves the males charging their pedipalps, which are two really cute little army things that are at the front of their sort of mouth area. And basically, they jerk off into these little hands, then they approach the female. And in this case, he's like holding her big fangs up away from his body so that he doesn't die and thrusting the pedipalps into her. One of the advantages of pedipalps when you're trying to mate with a massive alien with huge fangs is that it provides you a little bit of distance. You can do all of the sex at arm's length and that's good because when the fangs come down, that is likely going to be a fatal strike. Redback males are way smaller than females. They're in fact the size of a perfect prey item for a female. So to give her warning that he's on his way as a suitor rather than a Uber Eats deliverer, he is plucking her strings. He's gotta have this nice quiet environment and it's like he lights a couple of candles and then he plays like a really lovely flamenco tune on her web. And basically these vibrations are telling her that he's a male and that he's there for sex. Oh, that really shows you the size difference, doesn't it? He looks literally like a tick on her side <laughs> rather than a male. Spiders and redback spiders are a fantastic example of sexual dimorphism. It's where, in this case, the male and the female almost look like different species. Redbacks are one of the only species that do this. It's called complicit cannibalism. He does like a forward somersault where he flips his butt up into the air and then over directly onto her mouth parts. What he's actually trying to do is say, eat my butt. Literally, eat me. The mother of your children is going to need food to make really lovely strong eggs, so you sacrifice yourself. Oh! So this is a nursery web spider and I think the male is doing a little bit of bondage. Some spiders, to avoid getting eaten, will actually try and tie little web knots around the ends of the legs of the female. They'll incapacitate her while they put their pedipalps inside. It's kinky stuff. What is it doing? Is this oral sex? You might think that this sort of thing wouldn't be allowed on the ABC, but you would be wrong. Whew. All right, spider oral sex. Who's in? This guy. So this is a Madagascan bark spider. They've got quite the sexual repertoire. He does this during copulation, before it, after it, up to 100 
times. Whee! <laughs> when it's just not doing it for you, you should be able to make like a high speed getaway, like an ejector seat <laughs> and just blast off into space. Yeah. So that is a method that male spiders use to protect themselves from being eaten. They basically tense up some of their legs against the female, and then as soon as their petty pulps are in and they've been successful, they just like boing out of there and just sproing off at like the speed of light. Which is really fast when you're that big. These ones are peacock spiders, the best disco dancers in Australia. The males are often brightly coloured, especially on this bit at their back. They put it up, and they wiggle it about, it's all iridescent, and then they wave their arms like they're at like a concert in the 2000s. What they're trying to do is show the female how much of a good mate they would be. And I mean, it must work, she must like it, because if he's successful and he gets to mate, most often, peacock male spiders, they actually get to survive. From cannibalism to dancing, from catapulting to bondage. I mean, spider sex is a real mixed bag and it's risky business. You could end up dying, but at least you go out doing what you love. Echidnas aren't aggressive, but they do have an excellent form of defence, which is all of their cool spikes. But when you are a walking ball of needles, how do you actually get your groove on, if you know what I'm saying? Sounds like it could be a bit dangerous. Well, here we've got an Australian echidna. The only one of two mammals in the world what lay eggs. God, it's so cute. What a weird animal. They are a special mammal, they're a monotreme, and they do produce an egg. The other one what lays eggs is the platypus. They're having a good feed. So they use their claws to rip holes and then their long and sticky skinny tongue goes in and out really, really quickly. And that's how they actually draw all of the ants and termites back into their mouth. And his beak is extremely sensitive. It has electroreceptors in it. So as it is going along, it is sensing the electropulses of the muscles inside the invertebrates that it's searching for. Let's just, just check while, have you looked at his spurs? Oh, yeah. One of the ways Whoa! that we can tell. Oh, oh, look at the little, is that, is that the little spur? Oh, it's much smaller than I thought. So echidnas are monomorphic. That means that from the outside, it's really hard to tell whether they're male or female because they don't have any external genitalia, right? Male echidnas do have a spur at the back and it's sort of like the platypus spur, except echidnas aren't venomous. They're much more likely to kill you with cuteness. Yep. Oh God, oh God. Oh, God! Oh, he's swabbing it! Oh, for crying out loud. So echidnas have four heads on their penis and they can shoot sperm out of two heads at once, one side or the other. Inside the female echidna, in her reproductive system, there's actually like sort of like a Y shape. There's two pockets. So maybe it's sort of like this evolution that's happened over time where they go poo and go off to the left and then in the next time they go poo and go off to the right. The whole thing is super weird, but that's what you would expect from an egg laying mammal. So echidna mating trains, I have never seen one in real life. But I've seen lots of videos like this, which basically show a female being trailed by a big group of males. There's even reports of there being up to 11 male suitors following one female. This is a mature female and she's wafting sexy scents all over the landscape as she's going along. Can't help it, she just smells sexy. And as she goes, all of the male echidnas are putting their little beaks up and going, I want a bit of that. But because echidnas are essentially extremely polite animals, they just form a line and follow her around until eventually she's ready to mate. Oh! 
this would totally be the part where your nana would lean over and put her hand over your eyes. <laughs> After the train goes on for a very long time and the female is ready to mate, she lays down nice and flat on the ground. And then it's sort of like a bit of a fight for who dares wins, you know? It might be the strongest male, the quickest male, the last male standing gets to go in. And what he actually does is digs down beside her and forms a little hollow and then he moves his rear end in underneath and they mate like this. So he's sort of around the side of her and that's how he avoids getting spiked. I feel like I need to avert my eyes. I mean, who filmed this? And then what's that third echidna doing? Is he just like, just watching? Echidnas are one of Australia's cutest and most beloved creatures, but they are weird. And it's safe to say that their sex lives do not buck that trend. <laughs> Dolphins are renowned for their intelligence. So does that mean that they have very intelligent sex? Spoiler alert, it sort of does, but they also have a dark side. Oh God! Why didn't anyone give me any warning? Why is that swimmer so close? This is all types of wrong. So yeah, dolphin sex. Often males will actually form little cooperative groups in which they sort of kidnap females until she becomes receptive to their advances. And they can be quite forceful in that activity. That is a pretty amazing video because you can see a dolphin penis. Dolphins don't have a breeding season. They breed basically all year. And a dolphin erection can happen basically instantaneously because sex, when it happens for dolphins, is very quick, like seconds long. So he needs to be ready when the opportunity arises. Do those swimmers realise what they're witnessing? <laughs> oh, it was so amazing. We went out snorkeling and the dolphins were just playing. Turns out they were masturbating. Dolphins are smart and will have sex for other reasons apart from procreation. And there certainly seems to be some behaviours in dolphins around the world which indicate that they do things for pleasure and this could be one of them. It looks as if they're doing a nice bit of a wriggle on something that feels nice on their nether regions down there. Okay, it appears to have a sea sponge that it looks like it's carrying along. So I think what could be happening here is gift giving. The male has a sea sponge. Now, he's probably ripped that off the ocean floor and you have to be big and strong to do that. Sexy, isn't it? But also, when you show how big and strong you are to someone that you're trying to mate with, it could also be an act of aggression. So he's saying, I'm big and strong, so you better mate with me. Oh wow, so we've got some belly to belly copulation going on. How romantic. Now they're getting their neighbours involved. Oh wow! Oh God, it's a swingers party. Each species has their preferred positioning. These are spinner dolphins and their preferred mating position is belly to belly as they go along. Oh, well. oh I've never seen a video of this before. Oh, the baby just came out. Oh my God, look how vigorous it is. Dolphin females give birth in shallow water where it's sort of nice and warm and they'll often be accompanied by other female dolphins who act as midwives. So if the mother exhausts herself during the birthing process, the midwives can actually scoop up the baby and lift it to the surface so that it can breathe. There are humans in there, which indicates to me that this is probably in an enclosure, that they're not wild dolphins. Keeping in mind that putting a dolphin in a pen, even if it is on the ocean side is something like 200,000 times smaller than its range in the wild. And it's really bad for their physical and mental health. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so the dolphin is harassing a human. This is the moment I was waiting for. 
Dolphins are incredibly social creatures and when they find themselves on the outer edges of dolphin society that can be for a number of reasons. It may be because they're not quite right to fit in with society, it may be that they're in a pen, but it can lead to all sorts of funny things like dolphins fixating on humans as objects for sexual gratification. This is actually a really dangerous position for these humans to be in. Sexual behaviour is interlinked with aggressive behaviour in dolphins. And I actually spoke with a wildlife photographer called Michael, who had it happen to him. Basically, I spend a lot of time on the Arctic, in the water, with whales, sharks, dolphins. So I look around and he was literally hanging, hanging next to me, less than an arm's length with his eye looking into my eye. But then he started literally charging us. And I also felt one of my ankles was being restrained, which I just couldn't figure out. Like, what's happening? Something is pulling my leg. It was very tight, hard to get away from. It's only at home when I offloaded the videos that, that I saw like, oh, yep, <laughs> that was it. <laughs> If he says no, you can't ascend. It's just a mass on top of you and it's blocking you. If you could go up a little bit, it would just pull you down again. Near the end, it was getting nasty. The problem here is not the dolphin because that's just one of the quadrillion whatever animals in the ocean. The problem is the, the interaction with humans or humans interacting with, oh, look how cute, <laughs> a dolphin. That's the issue. We go into their environment. It's not the other way around. It's not our ocean. It's their ocean. Yeah, Michael's experience sounds absolutely terrifying. I mean, being pushed down in the water to the bottom of the ocean is pretty much the stuff of nightmares. It's hard to accept that dolphins aren't just cute and cuddly. When it comes to their sex life, it really is an example of how they're wild animals. And they really do benefit from being in the open ocean, being wild and free without human interference. And I have to say that this is one case where I'll happily be in the friend zone. Fascinating amphibians or harmful pests. Frogs and toads have a bit of a mixed reputation and that extends to their sex life. Some of it's really fascinating and quite ingenious and some of it's macabre. So what are some of the slimy secrets of amphibian sex? Ooh, we got, whoa! How must it feel when they come out of your back? So this is a really interesting Surinam toad. So when this sexy mama has sex with her suitor, he actually pushes the eggs sort of up onto her spongy fleshed back. And once they're in there, the skin eventually grows over, sealing them into a perfect little chamber. And they develop in there. And when the moment is right, they split open the skin. It's like throwing back the hatch of like a submarine and burst into the water and like swim off. And they are little tiny dark froglets, perfectly formed out of her back. Ooh. So here's a bullfrog, right? Whoa! <laughs> so the African bullfrog is a beefy boy. He can get up to like two kilograms of frog. And he does partake in parental care. That means that when the tadpoles are in the water, he'll actually actively defend them. And I think that's what's happening in this video. He has got his eyes locked on that human as a potential predator, and he is going for it. <laughs> Crikey. All right, well, fighting African bullfrogs, because they've got the yellow underarms. And as a lot of conflicts in the natural world, it's generally about territory or sex. It's like a pub brawl, but over a woman. There might be a female in your puddle that you are protecting and they won't hold back. 
these bullfrogs, if they win the fight, if they kill their opponent, will actually eat each other. Yeah. And plexus alert, which is a love hug. <laughs> and plexus is what frogs do when they are mating. Now, in almost all cases, frog egg fertilization occurs outside the body. So the male likes to piggyback onto the female in some way. The female releases eggs out of her cloaca and they release, in this case, into the water in this long string of slimy sort of stuff. The male is piggybacked on top of her, holding on really tight, and he is releasing sperm at the same time. Oh, all right, see you later, love. Bye. We're done here. See ya. It's just like he's like, and off he goes. <laughs> oh, yeah. Group sex isn't all it's cracked up to be, guys. So these are UK common toads, and this happens in a lot of different species of toads. They make these mating balls, basically, where it's just a squirming mess of testosterone-driven male toads with probably a female toad at the middle. And they wrestle and mate for like two days on end. This can and often does result in female toad death because she just gets drowned, but also other male toads, if they're on the middle part, close to the female, they can just drown as well. Frog calls almost universally, it's always males, and they are calling for sex. I want it, come get it. But yelling out sex, sex, sex at the top of your lungs is apparently quite good at getting sex. It also lets all the predators know where you are. So there is some potential danger for the males in moaning at the top of their lungs like this. Oh, they're making a nest. So there's so many ways that frogs care for their young and some make these amazing hanging nests for their eggs. So what's actually happening is the female is excreting a sort of mucus uh, from her cloaca. And what it does is creates a little bubble holder for all the eggs and the semen to roll into. So what she's doing is frothing it with her back legs, making sure that her eggs have lots of moisture because frog eggs are soft shelled and they need to be hydrated. They don't like drying out. That means they become unviable. However you feel about frogs and toads, I think we can agree that they've got ingenious mating methods and some pretty good ways of bringing up their young. They are perfectly adapted to their environment wherever they are in the world. <laughs> There is no denying that these five animals have some bizarre approaches to mating. These may be terrifying or kind of gross to us, but when you think about it, it's pretty incredible the lengths that these animals will go to just to ensure that their species lives on. If you like this video and you want to find out more amazing animal facts, then you should find my podcast. It's weekly and it's called What the Duck. Yes, you can find it on the ABC Listen app and also anywhere that you find your podcasts.